Okay. We got to talk about this Notre Dame Ohio State game. And all jokes aside, all Ryan Day going full WWE after the game, jokes aside, we got to get into the details of the game. Because I thought it was a good game. I really did. Um, and I think you all should probably know by now, I am a guy who really appreciates a tough, knock down, drag out fight between two teams where it's really hard to score. Defenses are playing well. I equate it to like European soccer. Shout out Tottenham Hotspurs, by the way. They're my team. It's really, really exciting <clears throat> when you you have a low scoring game sometimes because touchdowns are all that more important and they don't happen so frequently and it doesn't feel like basketball on grass where Teams are just running up and down the field. and That wears on you after a little bit, I feel like. And Maybe I'm in the minority of college football fans when it comes to that, but I like a good old 17-10, to 10, or in this case 17-14 to 14 game, where it's more difficult to score, and you got to figure things out on offense, and there's some stri strategic and tactile things going on. Tactile? No, that's not the word. Tactical? There we go. Tactical things going on throughout the game, and, and offenses are maneuvering and trying to figure out how to pick apart the defense. I don't like it when it's like, you know, Texas Tech and Oklahoma back in the day scoring 70 on each other. To me, that gets boring after a while, because you're basically playing 7-on-7 seven seven ball, and I don't know if you've ever watched any 7-on-7 seven seven ball, but there's no defense. There may as well not even be a defense on the field. Um, so that's my first takeaway. I actually really enjoyed this game. Let me know in the comments what you guys think. Maybe it's because I'm just a biased Big Ten Midwesterner guy. I like good old-fashioned knockdown, down drag-out football. I love Jim Harbaugh-style football. But, that being said, I have never in my life seen two teams try to piss away a game more than I saw on Saturday night. First of all, Ohio State's defense is better this year. I'll give it to them. They are much improved. <clears throat> Their front seven is really good. JT Tui Molowau, I made some videos last week make kind of poking fun at him and poking fun at the fact that he hasn't even outplayed uh, three stars on Michigan's defensive line so far this year. Stepped up in a big way on that last drive by Notre Dame. But at the same time, Ohio State got into the second half and just like decided they weren't going to defend Notre Dame's ground game anymore. And for a team that seems to have like little man complex when it comes to whether they're tough or not, was a little weird and interesting to me. Ultimately, you end up giving up 176 yards on the ground. And to me, it seemed like the only reason why Notre Dame didn't just walk away with that game and give you that last possession that you had to go down and win it. And granted, you did win it. It's because Notre Dame made some really bad errors in play calling on that last drive of theirs. Otherwise, they could have just kept handing the ball off to Audric Estime. I almost forgot his name. Audric Estime. Running it up the gut, and they could have sealed the game. But no, Notre Dame. So first, Ohio State tries to piss away the game by just giving up on stopping Notre Dame on the ground, which is how they scored those two drives to make it a 14-10 game late. And then Notre Dame makes probably the two worst play calls I've ever seen right in a row until I saw their defensive play calls later on, which we'll get into in a minute. They call that double fake play where they've got two running backs in the backfield and they fake it to one and then fake it to the other. And then Hartman was, it looked like Hartman was either going to run or throw. Who knows? JT2 Omono, I was right in his fucking face. By the time he took the ball from the second running back, by the time he did the second fake what are you doing in one play? Because JT2 Molowau occasionally is the guy that everyone said he was going to be when he was recruited. This dumb play call. You were handing the ball off straight up the gut for all the yards you wanted for the entirety of the second half. And then you go and do that? Just hand it off. Don't get fancy with it. Your offensive line was killing them. That offensive line, if you looked in the early part of the second half, was getting like three, four yards just automatic on that Ohio State defensive line. Why would you make a call like that, though? Give them any kind of a chance to get into the backfield. 
one guy sneaks by a tackle, and he's right there. And JT Tuumolowal did that on that play. And speaking of JT Tuumolowal, what does Notre Dame do on the next play? They could have called a delayed handoff. They could have called just a regular handoff. They could have called anything on that third and long. They could have run the clock down even more, forced Ohio State to take a timeout, punted the ball down, and made Ohio State try to drive the field with like 50 seconds left on the clock as opposed to a minute 30 or a minute 30 and they they don't they don't have one of their timeouts. Notre Dame calls a fucking screen pass. And maybe it could have worked. I saw some glimpses on the film uh uh that people shared on Twitter where it looked like it was wide ass open had I believe it was Estime or maybe one of their other maybe it was that young freshman kid who was really fast had he gotten the ball. But again, JT2 Omoloau was right there. And what do you not do from what we saw in the Penn State game last year when you call a screen pass against Ohio State? You don't run it to JTT's side of the field. Dumb. Fucking incredibly dumb. JT2, JTT tips the pass. Ohio State gets the ball back with a minute 30 on the clock, about... And what do they do? They go down and score. Why do they go down and score? Because once again, Notre Dame fucked it up about as badly as you can fuck it up and called prevent defense on 3rd and 19 against a good quarterback in Kyle McCord, Marvin Harrison, and Emeka Abuka. That's another thing you just don't do. I don't, I'm sorry, but that is just fucking... That's giving the game to Ohio State at that point. Kyle McCord had a rough game to that point. I believe he was only, I believe for the whole game, he had only thrown like 52 or 54%. Not very efficient. But on that drive, very efficient. And you can say somewhat that Notre Dame is giving it to them. They were. And Marcus Freeman is, a, is <sighs> man, people in South Bend, I feel bad for you. You got poverty, you got a poverty program coach in Marcus Freeman. You do. You do. Maybe he'll, he's young, maybe he'll learn from this. But damn, we're going to get into, you think this, what we've covered so far is egregious? We're going to get into the real egregious shit in a second. <sighs> anyway, Notre Dame calls a prevent defense. Kyle McCord does what a five-star quarterback should do against prevent defense with those wide receivers. Takes advantage of it. Ohio State gets all the way down to the two-yard line with seven seconds left. And what does Notre Dame do? They put ten guys on the field. Ten. Two plays in a row. Ten guys. Ten. This many. Five. Ten. Not eleven. Ten. And they let Ohio State score. They just let them waltz into the end zone. And Ohio State wins it. And for as much as Ohio State was trying to piss the game away, in another way that they tried to piss the game away, McCord damn near threw an interception on that last drive. Ball got tipped up in the air. If, Ohio, if Notre Dame's safety had come down with it, that would have been the game. I have never seen, like I said, two teams try to piss away a game as much as Ohio State and Notre Dame did. But that was, I'll hand it to them, a tough win by Ohio State. Do I think that they're a tough team? Well, that depends. It's subjective. And I'm going to make a video later today about all that. I still think it's hilarious Ryan Day getting into back and forth with 86-year-old men who don't even really know where they're at at any given moment in time. But that's, that's for that other video. Ohio State did get a tough win. And in some respects, I do think Ohio State is a tough team. I think they've got tough kids on that roster who are really good football players. But not their coach. But anyway, how much stock do I give in this victory for Ohio State? That's really hard to figure out, to be honest with you. They played a tough game. They didn't play their best game. They were on the road against the top 10 team, so I'll, I'll give them that. No one's going to play a perfect game on the road against the top 10 team, even though I don't think Notre Dame is really that good anymore. Um, they did play them well. They did play them tough. <clears throat> but Notre Dame also pissed the game away in like every way possible. I saw Notre Dame running down Ohio State's throat circa, like, 2021 Michigan style with Hassan Haskins hurtling over defenders, and I thought that game was over. I did. I thought this is if, – if I tweeted it out, actually. When Notre Dame 
had given Ohio State the ball back. I think Ohio State had another position with like six minutes left or something. I thought they have to score here because Notre Dame is running the ball so well that if they punt the ball away, they might not get the ball again. And what did Notre Dame do? They gave them the ball right back. So it's hard for me to put any too much stock in this victory, but then again, it's a top 10 win on the road, and you'll see in my rankings, Ohio State's ranking is going to reflect that. It's a tough win. Do I think that Ohio State is like a national championship caliber team as of right now? I think they have the potential to be, but there are other teams out there that are playing kind of the style of ball that Ohio State likes to play better than Ohio State right now, and that's where I think... I have to question if Ohio State is really a national championship caliber team. Because they're tough, but I don't think they're tough enough to beat a Michigan or even a Penn State right now. They're an athletic, 7-on-7 style kind of throw the ball around to your wide receivers and let them make plays kind of team. And that can win national championships. I'm not saying it can't. But Washington and USC and some other schools out there, especially out west in Oregon, are doing that better right now with better quarterbacks, with Heisman caliber quarterbacks. What I saw from Kyle McCord on that last drive was amazing. He made some big time throws. But what I saw from Kyle McCord over the course of the entire game wasn't anything close to Heisman candidate level. And I think with the way Ohio State plays football, the way they want their offense to flow, the way they want to win games by jumping on top of people early and then just controlling the game from there and piling the points on. You need that C.J. Stroud, that Justin Fields, that Joe Burrow had he actually stayed there kind of level of play from your quarterback. Because I'll tell you one thing, Penn State, well, Penn State has James Franklin from their head for their head coach. I don't know if I can necessarily say that they wouldn't piss the game away. But Michigan's not pissing the game away like, like Notre Dame did. If, if you're in that same situation with Michigan later on in the year and Michigan's got the ball with like five minutes left and they're able to run the ball on you like Notre Dame was, that's the game, bud. I'm sorry. So Ohio State's still got some stuff to figure out. Notre Dame, I don't know what the fuck to make of you. Uh, Sam Hartman, I feel bad for you. I thought Sam Hartman played an all right game. He could have played a better game. He could have played a much worse game, though. Audric Estime is one of the better wide receivers in the country, or wide receivers, running backs in the country. There are some players on that roster that deserve better from their coach because 10 guys on the field on the final two plays, two plays, not just the final play. It would have been bad enough if it was the final play. Final two plays, the other team has the ball on your two-yard line. They haven't been able to convert on a third and short or a fourth and short all night, and you just give them the game. And if I'm a Notre Dame player today, I'm like, what the fuck are we even doing this for if this, this douchebag can't even put 11 guys on the field? on a fourth and short to win us the game. Anyway, that's my Notre Dame, Ohio State reaction video that I didn't really think I was going to make, but I decided to record last minute. That's why it's on my phone. Feel free to like, share, and subscribe. Follow along with the channel. I'm going to have more reactions and shit throughout the week because I like to talk about college football, and I hope you do too. And if you like watching me watch co talk, talk college football, subscribe to the channel. Bye.